Oh, please don't be his wife again. <laughs> that was so uncomfortable. Hello. Yay. Hello. Hey. Hey. John? Yeah. Hi. Welcome. How's it going? Hello. Good. How are you? Good. Good. We uh, had a had a missed call there. Uh, spoke with um, yeah, someone. Yeah, no, that's... That was my fault. I actually we gave you my home phone number. You can blame me. Oh, oh, good, awesome. We will. Um, so hi, great to uh, be talking to you in a manner that we can that we can hear you. You can hear us, okay? Yeah, everything's fun. Fantastic. So, um, would you like to uh, first just um, in introduce yourself? Let the let the chat room and the viewers uh, know who who you are. All right. Hi, I'm John Scalzi. I am a science fiction writer. My most recent book is the New York Times best-selling novel called Fuzzy Nation. Uh, I used to be the creative consultant for Stargate Universe. Uh, my uh, first book, Old Man's Water, is currently being made into a movie with Wolfgang Peterson directing, and I'm the president of the Science Fiction Fantasy Writers of America, and devastatingly handsome. <laughs> awesome. That's always handy. Of course. Uh, we have a... Yeah. We, we have a bunch of questions that people have posted to the uh, to our desertbus.org uh, blog, and anyone who's listening now can go to desertbus.org and the post on John Scalzi and post your questions there. Um, the uh, well, I mean, first of all, do you know do you know who we are and what we're doing? Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh good. I'm I'm, I'm well aware of the the uh, amazing virtual track through the. The vasty uh, desertness, and okay. uh, I fully support it in every possible way. Oh, great! Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Um, so, uh, actually, uh, at the bottom there. Sorry. The last um, one. Yeah, yesterday, okay. uh, someone uh, because, as well as the, doing the bus, we also do specific challenges. People can be like, "I'll give you twenty bucks to sing this song or something." Um, yesterday, someone donated. I believe it was thirty-five dollars for me to uh, dramatically recite the first three. Paragraphs or sentences of uh, the Shadow War of the Night Dragons. Shadow War of the Night Dragons, Book One: The Dead City Prologue. Yes, <laughs> yes. that's the one. That's the uh, one. It is the one. Yeah. And that was that was pretty amazing. Yeah. We had to. Uh, <laughs> we, we there's a lot of dark. dark, dark when 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 after saying that we were like, and he's phoning in tomorrow. Yeah. We, we had to then clarify uh, <laughs> that, that that's not actually you know. Some people may not have clued into the joke. Let's, yeah. let's put it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an April Fool's joke. And right. uh, we, we had written it because uh, they did a, uh, Tor.com uh, did a poll of, uh, like, the most popular science fiction uh, books of the last decade. And they took all the nominations and their titles, and they did a statistical analysis to see which uh, uh, words showed up the most. And so Shadow was the first, oh. War was the second, night, so on and so forth. And so they said if you wanted to make the, uh, the most successful uh, science fiction or fantasy book of the next ten years, you would call it yeah. Shadow War of the Night Dragons, Book One, The Dead City. And so I joked, <laughs> I will totally write that. Yeah. Um, and they were like, you should do that as a, as a April Fool thing. And so we did it as an April Fool thing, and I wrote a 3,000-word story about it. And, uh, uh, but some people took it seriously. Not only did some people take it seriously, we actually got... Hollywood interest for it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, it's, oh, God. it's absolutely true. My agent called me up and he says, are you sitting down? And I sat down. He says, there's Hollywood interest. And I'd like, you're joking. He says, yeah. no, it's from producers who have done hit movies about wizards with scars. And they yeah. said, if, it po if at all possible, we'd like to see a galley when it's done. And I said, well, what did you say to them? And they said, you know, and my agent said, well, I told them it was an April Fool's joke. And I said, you fool! We could have told you written this all the way home! That's right! That's right. That could, you need a new agent. Yeah, yeah clearly I do. But uh, I, I kept them anyway, for oh, now. For now. Um, we have another question here from the uh, the blog that yeah. says, says, "Could you talk about red shirts for a bit?" And then they say, "Yes, this is an excuse for a shameless plug." Uh, okay. Well, red shirts is the upcoming uh, novel. Uh, it comes out in June of next year. And basically, uh, the the great thing about this book is when people ask me, "So what are you writing about?" I say, "Well, the title is Red Shirts." They went, "Oh," because uh, at this point, only an idiot doesn't know what red shirt is. Um, and so basically, the, you know, the concept is that these people are on a spaceship and they begin to notice that statistically speaking, they should not actually go on away missions with certain, uh, you know, certain <laughs> officers. And how do they sort of avoid doing that, uh, you know, and getting killed? And so that's kind of the, 
the fun of uh, this particular book is all the ways that they work to avoid, you know, getting themselves, you know, uh, eaten by landworms or, you know, uh, uh, or ice badgers or whatever you want to call it. Um, and at the same time, you know, not getting, you know, court martialed and stuff. So it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun, is basically uh, what I'm promising people. It's every everything you wanted in a uh, 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 space opera and more. Sweet. Um, mm -hmm. Well, there we go. Shameless plug completed. <laughs> Which is fine because somebody asked for it. So. Yes, I do what I can for you guys. Yeah. You know, when it comes to shameless plugs, I'm the most shameless possible. John, did you log um, into our chat room and request that on the blog? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You repeat that. Oh, Liz was asking if you if you uh, somehow went in and asked that question yourself. Oh no 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 no! I would I would never do something that blatant. I I would be much more subtle. But I am glad that somebody is that blatant. So whoever they are, thank you. Uh, who uh, uh, is question here? Who is uh, your favorite writer? Uh, Lord, other other like than yourself, asking, of course. It's like you know, which which is your favorite child? You know, uh, <laughs> the uh, of of the you know. Obviously, I like Heinlein because uh, he and I have a, a lot of things in common writing wise. Uh, current writers, I like quite a few of them, but the problem is, is as president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, if I single out any one of them, the rest will come into my house at the night and stab me through the eyes. So uh, <laughs> I would just have to say they're all pretty good. I, you know, that said, uh, our uh, uh, last couple of, uh, of Nebula winners, you know, for best novel, was one was Connie Wells for her uh, Blackout and All Clear, which was fantastic, and the year before that. Uh, it was Paolo Bacigalupi, who is a personal friend of mine, uh, for The Wind Up Girl. If you read one or the other of those novels, you really can't go wrong. Awesome. Cool. If it, if um, it makes the, uh, the whole conflict of interest thing any easier, our chat room seems to have decided that you are, in fact, the president of science. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can titrate like nobody's business. <laughs> Um, on that topic, we have a question. As the president of, of science, what is your opinion on weaponized lemons? And weaponized what? Lemons. <laughs> the citrus Weaponized fruit. lemons. You know, the problem is, if you start weaponizing lemons, then you move up to grapefruit, yeah. and then where does it all end? I think you have to <laughs> treat Pomelos. citrus with love, not hate. I'm, I, 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 you know, this is, I feel very strong that you, if they, if they make, give you lemons, don't make, Grenades make grenade aid. <laughs> in, uh, in response to where does it end, the room has decided that uh, that the uh, that it ends with an orbital pomelo strike. <laughs> <laughs> there was vitamin C everywhere, man. It was horrible. I've got so much of my daily recommended intake. Um, uh, you mentioned. This is a, a question from the blog. You mentioned in your book on writing that you've supported yourself over the years by taking a variety of freelance writing jobs. Where's, what's the weirdest thing you've ever written for? What is the weirdest thing I've ever written for? Oh, wow. I, gotta, I have to think about this for a minute. Um, I, the weirdest thing I ever did would probably be... I did a product description for... Uh, it was it was a type of, of hair gel, and it was a it was a small brand uh, that uh, actually never went anywhere. It was basically writing some copies so that they could sell that to uh, other people. And it was it was hair gel that had glitter in it, uh, which is weird enough, but it was for men. And I was like, really, <laughs> really, sparkly hair gel for men. And I, and I think the problem was it was just ahead of the curve because you know, quite frankly. If, uh, you know, it had come out the same time as Twilight, you know, oh, yeah. it had sparkly vampires, it, it would have made millions. But uh, I, it, was, it was ahead of its time, and I think that was, that was tragic. Um, wow, that's, that, that is a real missed opportunity. It really is. I, I, was, I, was sort of, I was sort of disappointed on many levels as well. But, you know, what, what, what can you do? I mean, I, other than, like, get some hair, hair gel and put some, some glitter in it, I suppose. <laughs> Um, oh yes, I'd, before I read this next question, it should be mentioned that anyone who gets asked questions during Desert Bus gets an honorary doctorate because yeah. all the questions are in this form. Uh, dear Dr. Scalzi, did you approach Paul and Storm or did they approach you or was Fuzzy Man just a wonderful surprise? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, for Fuzzy Man, that was me uh, intentionally um, 
uh, approaching them. And Fuzzy Man, uh, for those of you who don't know, is the magnificent power ballad that Paul and Storm wrote uh, as uh, for my novel, uh, Fuzzy Nation. And I had approached them and I said, I require a, a song for Fuzzy Nation. And they said, what sort of song? I said, the sort of bombastic, horrifying Michael Bay in credits ballad, you know, that will speak to the generations. And they said, we can, we can do that. And uh, so, so they went off and they did the thing that they did. And, and what they wanted to do was actually, they, they, they pretended like that they had a song that they had written a long time ago that they could never find a place for and that, we, that I had commissioned it. And so they sort of hastily slipped in the words Fuzzy Man uh, to this pre-existing song. So it was all very meta. And then when you listen to it, if you know that, it's, it's got this, this incredible, you know, super ballad, Jim Steinman, ridiculous, over-the-top, crazy, and, and I, I loved it from the minute I heard it, and, you know, uh, and that made Paul and Storm my, my, my special heroes in a completely non way. way. Cool. <laughs> That's a really cool story. Um, yeah. Will there be, a question here, will there be a sequel to Your Hate Mail Will Be Graded in 2018? Have people sent more hate mail just to get graded? Yeah, no. When the book first came out, there people were like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh! Can I hear? Is this bad enough?" And I'm like, "You're really missing the point, aren't you?" You know. But you know, I appreciated the enthusiasm. My, uh, I would actually wouldn't mind writing one in about uh, in 2008 because that would be 10 years uh, difference, uh, and I think it's possible to do. We'll just have to. We'll just have to see. It could be. You know, I eventually end up being uh, boring and not writing anymore. Uh, anything worth uh, recording anymore in into print form, but I suspect that yeah, there there is likely to be a sequel uh, in 2018. Uh, I don't know what I will call it yet, but because uh, that's you know six years off, but uh, it, that is my plan. If there's enough good stuff there, then we will definitely uh, do the sequel. Um, the the chat has or someone in the chat has decided that you. That you are no longer Doctor Scalzi, you are now Sir Doctor Scalzi, President King of Science. <laughs> hey, I, I like the way this is going. Give me, give me another three minutes, and I, you know, and I will become, uh, you know, Herr Commissar Scalzi. <laughs> You've been crowned the uh, Scientist in Chief, Scalzi. Oh, nice. Um, do you get, oh, excellent. Yes. Do you get sick of, and or how often do you get pleas for more books in the Old Man's War series? Oh, I get those a lot. I mean, it's my most popular series, so of course people want me to continue uh, to be doing that. Uh, and the thing I tell people is I'm not opposed to it. I'm not sitting there going, you know, I will never do this ever again. But it has to be, uh, you know, if I were just to do it and just sort of grind them out because it's like old man war, number five, even older, many year warrior, you know, all that sort of stuff, <laughs> then it would, be, it would be actually sort of pathetic and sad. So um, we will, uh, I will write a new one uh, when I have a really good idea for it um, and not an instant before because uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to mess up the thing that you uh, actually do really well because that's a, a good way to make everybody hate you there's a, another question um, I am currently a freshman in college writing a science fiction story do you have any advice for who to show a finished manuscript to much obliged uh, the best thing to do is get yourself a writer's digest, or excuse me, writer's market. Uh, look in there to what, see what the markets are uh, for that particular uh, manuscript. Find out what the submission requirements are and follow them exactly because submission requirements are actually an IQ test. And if you don't actually follow them to the letter, you will fail. So uh, that's, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, and, then, and then other than that, you know, it's just the, if you are writing a manuscript and you know that it's a science fiction manuscript, for example, uh, and there's a science fiction manu uh, uh, place that you like, send it there. Again, read the manuscript uh, submission guidelines and follow them to the letter. I really can't stress that enough. They're looking for a reason not to open up your, your uh, manuscript and read it. All right. And <laughs> this is a question that I feel... Uh, <coughs> Well, this, this feels like a good finisher, not that I'm trying to rush you anywhere, but uh, what is your stance on erotic Star Trek fan fiction? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's making that is, right is, is there an awful lot involved? Because if there's an awful lot involved, I'm totally down with it. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. 
<laughs> that was that was a lot more succinct than I, than I had, frankly, than I had feared. Um, um, oh, oh, okay, here we go. Dear Sir Doctor Scalzi, President, King of Science, God, Ruler of Eye Products, what is the strangest? What is the strangest or worst science fiction plot that you have ever read? That I've ever read? Oh, God, you got to remember that I used to do uh, uh, reading for, uh, to, to, buy, to buy stories for uh, science fiction magazines. So uh, it's so hard to uh, pick one because, you know, if you, once you dive into the slush pile, it's, it's just, you know, it, it's horrifying plots all the way down. Um, but you do, you do get things where you will have... You know, talking badgers, uh, you know, uh, having long drawn out discussions about objectivism to each other <laughs> in space with lasers. And uh, when that happens, all you have to do is, you know, just put the manuscript down, sit on the couch and curl yourself up into a fetal position and shiver for about 10 minutes straight. And then you have to go back and read some more of it. So this is, this is the life of uh, someone who, who uh, reads a lot of uh, science fiction manuscripts. Wow, that's that's a particularly awful sounding. Uh, yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> Pulling back that old question. Was this? Oh, okay. The classic sci-fi. Uh, okay. Uh, dear Science Admiral Skelzy. <laughs> In the world of classic sci-fi, i.e. the people who are past being offended at their lack of inclusion due to death or old age, who are your favorites? Or inspiration. Oh, uh, let's see. Is this uh, people living or dead? Uh, this is people who are, like, uh, old enough or dead that they won't okay. care. Oh, uh, okay. Well, uh, I've always been a big fan of China Mieville's work. I, uh, I, one of the things that I really like about... Uh, his books is that I can read them and go, these are fantastic, and I could never, ever, ever write like this. So, like, the pressure's off. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to steal from him. So that's always, that's always a positive. Uh, so he's, he's the one I always recommend for, uh, for people. Like, do you, do you want a, you know, a real challenge in science fiction? Go read Perdido Street Station. Uh, if you can handle that, then you're golden. All right. Well, hey. Okay. Um, uh, what? What? What's that? Oh, <laughs> someone in the room just asked me how you're enjoying Nano Ah, uh, I I love it. I watch. I like watching other people panic. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing it myself at the moment, but uh, I'm a big believer in. Uh, it's a good way for you to stretch and actually just uh, learn the, that actually one of the most important things you can do with writing is to actually sit there and just do it, just write out a whole bunch of work, and it doesn't really matter if they're particularly fantastic words or not, it's just the fact that you've done them is going to make a, a huge difference. Yeah, we, it's, uh, some of us have, have uh, from time to time, considered doing NaNoWriMo, but now this is our November, so we don't, <laughs> Well, I, th I think you guys are doing, doing a good enough thing in and of this that you can be excused from NaNoWriMo for now. Excellent. Oh, actually, I like NaNoWriMo. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tiny, They're tiny very, rhinoceros. Yeah, very, very small rhino. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Every I would love it so much more if it was NaNoWriMo's. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I think they're talking about my hometown. It's like... Oh, right. From Nanaimo. Nanaimo, yeah. People mispronounce that as all sorts of weird things. Nanaimo had rhinos in it. Okay. Nanaimo new rhino. Okay. New concept for a book. This is the elevator pitch. Tiny rhinoceroses. <laughs> Preaching objectivism to one another. Yes, yes. yes. We're not talking to Stephen King here, guys, okay? <laughs> so anyway, John, uh, thank you so much for calling in. We, 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 uh, we really appreciate talking to you. That was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks. It was bad. I was glad to do it. And uh, good luck on your, your desert uh, uh, bus trip. I hope you find enlightenment and money. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. At least, at least, hopefully, the latter. For the children. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling. Okay. Sure thing. Bye-bye. Bye. And apologize to your wife for that phone call. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Internet. You guys are